goodness with Face, Pat, and Tiz. So yeah, let's get over to the good shit, the positive black news, the uh, the cool shit, the awesome stuff, just the amazing things that black people are doing, creating, experiencing, uh, receiving, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So without further ado, the first story, man, um, is coming to us from all the way across the pond, as they would say. Uh, there's the first black Miss Ireland crowned in the competition 70 year history. So in the time that this uh, has been a pageant over there, we have our very first Black Miss Allen. Uh, Pamela Uba made history Sunday night by becoming the pageant's first Black winner since the contest began in 1947. The 26-year-old former asylum seeker came to Ireland from South Africa when she was seven, according to the Irish Times. Uber, the eldest of six siblings, is a part-time model and a medical scientist who has served as a frontline worker during the pandemic. Uh, so she said she cried when she got her Irish passport, she told the Times on Tuesday. And it was Uber's mother who got weepy Sunday, said the soccer fan and once nerdy student. My mom, she was in absolute tears, Uber said. Uh, so just salute to this queen, man. Uh, got the beauty, got the brains. Uh, and, you know, shattering barriers across the pond, man. You know, we we, we love to respect all of the, the melanated peoples of this world. And salute to the queen, Pamela Uber, for uh, her amazing success. And, you know, continued success, queen, in all of your endeavors. Uh, you definitely got the pedigree. Um, she has a medical science degree, and uh, she's completing her master's in clinical chemistry. So geez. she definitely already got her path you know what i'm saying laid out for us. she can pretty much write her own ticket at this point so continue success i hope you continue in the pageant work continue success there and continue success in the uh medical world and the, uh the uh science world man i i love it just continue success queen i love it man i love that man. We, we, we need thank you like for this. thank you for winning that pageant because i didn't even know black people were in ireland you know what i'm saying let alone be you know there's it's an interesting the there's an interesting history and theory around black people. Island. We may have to cover that on the pod next week. I got some, uh, you know, I got Ooh. them. You know, we like conspiracy theories and uh, weird histories and all that stuff. So uh, I'm gonna do the research on that. And then, matter of fact, why not? We'll talk about it next week. I got y'all. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's one. Yeah, I like learning history. Yeah, that should be a good debate. But it's, it's uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, moving on to our next story. This coming to, uh, well, the first story, let me uh, make sure I give credit. That came to us from the New York Daily News.com. This, this next one is coming to us from BlackAmericaWeb.com. Mm -hmm. Howard University honors Chadwick Bozeman by renaming the College of Fine Arts after the late act. Oh, so, yeah, yeah man. So, uh, salute to Howard University um, news was made public via the university's Instagram account recently referring to Bozeman in the caption as an icon in his own right, who has left an immeasurable legacy for the next generation. The relationship between HU and Chadwick was one of mutual love and respect with the 21 Bridges star and producer not only going back in 20, 2018 to accept his honorary doctorate, but also delivering one unforgettable commencement speech. So um, shout out to Howard for uh, just saluting the legacy of that amazing King man. Um, he deserves it. Um, from all accounts that I've ever heard about him, everybody say he was just a really dope brother, man. So um, yeah. salute to King Bozeman, salute to Howard for honoring him and uh, salute to all of the fine arts scholars that will now get to receive their degree under his school. So. Salute, man. Black kings and queens killing it out here in the game, man. And I, I love that blacks are supporting black staff with HU being the one that gives them that honor. So big respect. Big respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So for the next story, man, um, a Haitian American woman who has been helping the needy for nearly 20 years will now be named an African queen. Mm -hmm. Literally. Jeez. Yes, 
Yes, yes, yes. Uh, since 2004, the nonprofit Valley of Love Ministries has been helping to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, and provide physical and spiritual support to the needy in Palm Beach County, Florida. And it has done much. The nonprofit started in a small space on Broadway Avenue, moved to a multi-unit complex on Blue Heron Avenue, on Blue Heron Boulevard, and now is an even larger space on 45th Street that provides more services, more support, more help. Indeed, she helps more than 300 people a day. Thanks to those efforts and much more, the founder would now be an African queen. Uh -huh. Marie Antoinette Jean-Pierre Celine is that person. On, two th on September 9, 2021, she will be named by the country of Nigeria as an African queen and will be recognized over the course of a 10-day coronation celebration. Oh. I'm very excited about this, said Mr. Lean. Nobody but God, really and truly. The African nation learned about her work because she helped a man from Nigeria in 2020. When he returned home, he told country leaders about his experiences and who had helped him. And she would be the first Haitian American named an African queen. So salute to Queen, literally, Queen Marie Antoinette Jean Pierre Thaline. Big salute to you, Queen. That that is big, big shit right there. And salute to her for all her philanthropic efforts that are out here making sure that people can eat. Um, you know, we just uh was talking about homelessness recently, and uh, mm -hmm. I love to see the people out here that that's really doing the work, man. Like that. Just salute, man. And, and on a small way, man, if you can, when you go somewhere, man, um, a lot of times my wife, my son does it. Um, a lot of the uh, people I work with do it. Um, myself, I've done it. Grab you an extra sandwich or something. If you ride past something, you see a homeless person, man, just go ahead and, you know, hand it out there. Um, you know, but just do what you can when you can. And I think these people that's out here doing the work, man, Love that she's getting recognized for her efforts. And a uh, salute to the African queen, Marie Antoinette Jean-Pierre Philippe. All right. Man, I didn't even know people were still being kings and queens, let alone, you know what I'm saying? Bruh, Learning I'll, a lot already. Man, I, you'd be surprised. There are still princes in Africa. There are still kings mm -hmm. in Africa. Um, that is still very much a thing. Um, Lineage and whatnot. Okay. I don't know that you get the political power so much as the societal recognition, but, uh -huh. you know, continuing our culture is the main thing. And I, and I like that Blacks from around the diaspora uh, are able to still in, enjoy and be embraced by the culture that we, that we originally were. You know what I mean? So salute to Nigeria for doing that. Hell yeah. And salute to that brother for going back and like showing that gratitude by making sure he spread the good word about the person that helped him. You know what I mean? Like sometimes mm -hmm. we we get helped and then we forget to recognize the person that helped us, not knowing if that person help that they gave us might have been all they had and now they destitute. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, I always remember to get reach back, give back, show love to. You know what I'm saying? Give uh, honor or, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you recognize those people that pull you up and, and help you along the way. So salute to that brother too. Big moves out here. Big moves out here. Definitely. This next story. Um, it's long overdue good news, but good news nonetheless. The Harlem Hellfighters, a segregated World War I unit, earned a congressional gold medal. These brave black men who, even as they face segregation and prejudice at home, risk their lives to defend our freedoms overseas, says Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. The all-black army regiment nicknamed the Harlem, the Harlem Hellfighters battled both the German forces and racism during World War I. Now more than a century after their service, they have been, the unit has been honored with a long overdue congressional gold medal. President Joe Biden signed the Harlem Hellfighters Congressional Gold Medal Act into law last week. Replicas of the prestigious medal will be awarded to the family mem families of members of the 30 369th Infantry Regiment in recognition of the unit's lengthy service, which included frontline combat and hundreds of lives lost or affected by injuries. So uh, even though it's long overdue, you know, when the right thing is done, the right thing is done. So 
big respect to the Harlem Hell fighters and their service to this country and to their race as a whole. And just big, big, big pride, man. Shout out to those families who are able to now, you know what I'm saying, be recognized and see their ancestors, you know what I'm saying, given the proper respect that they're due. So salute to these brothers, man. Uh, and last but not least, we talked about her um, maybe a, back when we first started this segment, actually. Um, Nicole Hannah-Jones is launching a literacy program with the 1619 Freedom School. Journalist Nicole Hannah-Jones is launching a free community-based school literacy program with her 1619 Freedom School in Waterloo, Iowa. According to the Associated Press, the 1619 Freedom School will have a soft launch in October at the Dr. Walter Cunningham School for Excellence. A small number of students will begin the program in October before it is open for more participants in January. The program is for fourth and fifth grade students who attend Waterloo Community Schools. The journalist says, despite test scores showing the overwhelming need for literacy assistance in Black students, the program is open to all. We will accept any student who has a need up to our capacity. We don't discriminate based on the student's race, Hannah Jones said. So salute to Queen Hannah Jones um, for making sure she not only talks the talk and exposes and brings awareness to the situation, but she's also out here, you know what I'm saying, doing the work to make sure that the next generation has all of the tools and resources that they need to be um, successful adults and really take the reins of leadership going forward. So salute to Queen Nicole Hannah Jones. And that is the positive black news that you can use. Hopefully it inspires, hopefully it informs, hopefully it just gives you a smile on your face to see other people doing well. So big respect to the Kings and Queens. We just highlighted 